Hey guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Welcome cross watchers for Aries. And if you're brand new to the channel, welcome, welcome. Do come in in the comments. Say hello. Let me know where you're from. And um, I'll definitely reply later on today. Here I go. I'm going to pull from Soul Helper Oracle to activate the reading. Let's see what comes through for you. Beautiful. Follow your vision. Never lose sight of what is really important. And I love the two Arctic wolves here. Is that what they are? They're very beautiful. Um, never lose sight of your vision. Follow your vision. Never lose sight of what's really important. Um, lovely message. It's important also because we're now in the pre-shadow phase of Mercury retrograde. Um, that goes from the 17th of August, uh, September. Guys. <laughs> okay let me reset <laughs> july 17th to august 5th so he started his pre-shadow phase at 22 degrees of the sign of leo he will continue on still moving forward gonna cross over into virgo and then on august 5th he's gonna turn around and he's gonna head back over that pass back to 22 degrees of Leo, and then he's going to turn around again and head direct and close out his post-retrograde shadow. So the reason I'm telling you that is because this first two weeks is where you really need to be focused on what's really important because that's what we're going to be dragged back through when he stations retrograde. This is thoughts, perceptions, our vision, communication, so thanks for indulging the old lady. This happened to me with, with uh, I think it was the Leo bonus reading I did. I was like, I am trying to talk about Mercury retrograde and I sound like, <laughs> like I have lost a lot of steps. Oh, okay, so what I'm going to do is pull the main spread, give you my general impressions. We'll get the details. I'm not going to go through every card to clarify, but where I, I need it, I want to look at your person, you, and this connection, past, present, future. Um, so here we go. Oh, see Aries? Do not lose sight of what's important. We're starting off with some heart heaviness, maybe some heartache or heartbreak. That is the focus of this reading. Hmm. Okay. So I'm feeling... Uh, some potential here for um, a third party storyline. Yes. Okay, so what I mean by that is, and third party can be anything. Honestly, it can. Um, it can be, you know, uh, distance. It can be obligations. It can be um, religious differences, meddlesome family members, friends. But it can be, right, like a love triangle. And because we're leading here with the Three of Swords, I'm sensing that there's something here that's very hurtful. Um, your person in the past with devil energy and in the present with the three of cups. This is where I'm picking up on third party. Um, and because in the future, I'm seeing some resistance and defensiveness from them. Um, it could be that you're trying to sort things out because here for you, the center card that gets all the energy for you in the present, it's about reconciliation. It's about kind of forging a win-win outcome. Um, and there's a struggle around that because you're dealing with somebody who may be resistant. And this doesn't mean that their intentions are nefarious. It just means that, you know, three is too many. <laughs> okay, It's one too many um, famous words. So for you in the past, Page of Pentacles feels like this was some, some kind of a newer connection or maybe a fresh start for the connection, but we're still entangled with some negative karma that you are aware needs to be reconciled on some level in the near future. Um, page, a page of Wands for you is sort of optimistic, seeing the glass half full. Um, could be uh, you delivering a positive message to this person as well. 
for the connection in the past. Um, it feels like maybe there's been a little isolation. It could, it could be that um, you're, you're not sensing, you don't have easy access to one another. So it's been more of a solitary path for each of you. Present energy now with the Seven of Swords. That's some avoidance. That can be something that feels shady. Um, and in the near future, uh, maybe an offer coming forward very slowly, very methodically, very deliberately. Um, and so things aren't going to change fast is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I kind of feel like I'm catching you in the midst of something that's been very challenging. So hence, your soul helper is telling you, um, follow your vision and, you know, hold fast to what's important to you. So let's see the three of swords. That's very important. Ten of wands. Yeah, five of wands. Queen of cups. I think that this is... I think it's breaking your heart. Oh my gosh, Aries. I get emotional. Um, a lot of conflict here, a lot of drama. I think it's been enough. Um, you know, I think you've been as open and compassionate as you can. It's just too much. So there is a very powerful energy here of a need to kind of get some relief Let's see, um, which is why in the center of the spread is the Six of Wands, because you're seeking to make peace here. You're not looking for trouble. You're not looking for drama. You want to find, like, wh where, do we ha where do we agree on something, right? <laughs> where can we compromise? Where can we negotiate? Where, like, you seem to be trying to find that common ground. Um, and because that's the basis where we're less opposed, right? We're, if we find the common ground in any situation in life, that is the best jumping off point for resolving differences, for, you know, um, hel helping someone see how something is hurting us, right? So I feel like that's what I'm getting from you is part of the relief would come from just having that moment together where you're like, okay, I understand you, I hear you. Okay, I hear you in return. Um, because that's where the peace lives. So let's see the devil with the three of cups. Yeah. Whoever this is, um, may be going through a process of change. Um, at least on some unconscious level, they're aware of the need to choose a path and the death card can symbolize the ending of something but it's also about a phase of growth change and transformation and sometimes we have to leave something behind we have to let it die off we have to let aspects of ourselves our patterns our inhibitions our limitations our self-limiting beliefs our obsessions our manipulations yada 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 right we have to kind of let it die off so we can be born again into the better version of ourselves. And it's interesting that I see the star in the death card because there's a touch there. There's just a touch of like losing hope. Okay, not all hope is lost, but it's right there on, on the edge. And the only way out is through for this person. And so they're going to need to choose a path. And in that process, I feel it's about choosing you or possibly the other energy whatever that third energy is in your situation. It's a general reading, not a private reading. So it's gonna be different for everybody. Take it as it speaks to you. Now for you, I wanna see you with this um, six, of wands to the six of wands to the page of wands. The world, yes. Look, you're all about, hey, let's close out the ish cycle, have a new beginning. You're coming in with these lovely energies of six in tarot is about balance. Um, and the six of pentacles is reciprocity, the give and take of it all. And it's almost like you're kind of just wanting to communicate about that in a very positive way. And even with some measure of, um, whoops, 
some measure of awareness that maybe things will need to be kept a little lighter, a little on the lighter side in your connection. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> She's back. Um, you know, because the Page of Wands can also be a little lighthearted and flirtatious. And it just seems to me like moving forward, your energy is trying to keep things positive, close out darker, more challenging cycles. The world card is Saturn. Um, prepare for a new beginning that's more reciprocal, um, more harmonious and balanced, and maybe dialing back a notch on the intensity. I think that's very rational. So when I look at your connection, um, I'm curious about the Hermit to the Seven of Swords. Oof. Oh, well, that explains it. Right. So I think things um, kind of got a little intense a little early in the game. And so what may have happened, what had happened was some themes around commitment, the happily ever after, the, these two cards together, right? We're talking about, oh, you know, engagement, marriage, the kids, the house, the cars, the dogs, like we're, you know, everything we dream of, that happily ever after kind of an energy coming through here. And I feel like that's where this person sort of, if they didn't split physically, they checked out ran away, still running, still avoiding. But what's nice is they're kind of in this choosing the path mode, which means that a decision will ultimately be made. Right now it's kind of marinating within for them. Um, and I feel like your approach in, from here to the future, being more positive, more um, focused on the resolutions, like let's, you know, there's no, one of my dearest friends, God rest his soul, used to say to me when I would like come to him in hysteria crying, he'd say, darling, in his beautiful Southern accent, there are no problems, there are only solutions. There you go, from Bruno's lips to your ears. That's your focus. No problems, only solutions, Let's find where we meet in the middle. Let's find what our give and take is, right? Let's talk it out. And then you're, you're optimistic. On we go. And that seems like a very positive approach to what I believe happened and where things are kind of falling out now. So let's go ahead and look at our Knight of Pentacles for the connection. Yes. It's going to take a while but a leap of faith is on the menu. The um, full card can also be a card of assessing the risks, a look before you leap, but there it is, right? With your optimism and your positivity and you kind of dialing down the intensity and keeping it, you know, <laughs> cheap and cheerful, um, yeah, I feel like this person will move very slowly and methodically toward you and then finally go all in, right? Taking the leap for love. It is not out of the realm of possibility. Follow your vision. Hold on to what's important to you. Never lose sight of it because I feel it's available to you. I'm going to pull a card here. Now that I see what's happening, I'm looking at the Seven of Wands and I want to be sure I don't miss something important. Okay. A little resistance, um, but some form of an awareness of their need to cooperate. So here again, um, if they're going to resist anything, they're going to resist talk about marriage stop that's what sent them packing before or made them sort of you know pull back or made them do a disappearing act so i am speaking to a very specific storyline where themes around life partnership or marriage or the future bugged this person out completely twitched them out and so they will be resistant 
to cooperating with themes of, right, something more long-term. She is a feminine archetype of a life partner. This is a marriage ceremony card. It, it, that's what their objection is going to be. So if we keep things, as my sister says, she be cheerful. Um, yeah. It will give them the space and you will allow them to take the time they need so they can take the leap for love when they have, you know, scoped everything out, assessed the risks, um, and decided that they feel safe in the connection. And it's not that they, that they don't feel safe with you per se, but this is somebody who probably has um, a lot of bad experiences in the past. And um, that's what I see. So I am going to take this to the extended. I will give you the astrology that showed up here. Remember, in the description box below, you'll see a number one, a number two, a number three. Those are your three options for how to access extended readings. Okay? So make sure when you click on a link that you read what it is you're purchasing. That's the first thing. Second thing, if this reading has been interesting or helpful or, you know, has been confirmational in any way, insightful, please subscribe below if you haven't already. That is what helps me grow this channel. I cannot stay here if my videos aren't shown to new potential viewers. Um, it'll just shrivel up and die. So thanks to those of you who have already been so supportive in that endeavor. And I'm still asking for the subscriptions. I'm still asking for the views and shares. And that is my big request. Um, so that being said, in the extended, I want to look at this person, right? Who's showing up here with some, some difficulties, letting go of maybe some kind of third energy, third party, um, whatever it is, it, it needs to change. Remember this third energy can be, I mean, this, this can even just be a party person, right? Somebody who's just super into being free and single and mingling a lot um, and that could be it so it doesn't have to be a physical person it can be an energy um, that is interfering in this connection so i want to look at them i want to see you know what they really think and feel about you at this time and i'll get a whole lot more um, so that's what we're going to do in the extended. Here's your astrology. Queen of Cups, Cancerian energy. Devil is Capricorn. Star is um, Aquarius. Sorry. <laughs> the death card is Scorpio. And we have the Queen of Pentacles is more Capricorn. Page of Pentacles is Taurus Virgo Capricorn. The world card is Saturn, Aquarius, and Capricorn. We've seen the theme here. Page of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. We have the Hermit is Virgo. Uh, Taurus here for the Hierophant. We've got more Virgo for our um, Knight of Pentacles. The Fool card is the planet Uranus, which rules Aquarius. And that Page of Wands came out twice. That's what I've got for you guys. Thanks for joining me. I'm headed to the extended. I'll see you there in a second. Bye for now.